a species at the zoo with a surprising reputation for savagery during seduction, is one of their most popular and colourful, the clownfish. Clownfish are a nightmare. They literally are one of the biggest pains that I have to work with. Clownfish are very territorial and aggressive. <laughs> They're like the bulldogs of the sea. Clownfish live in strict hierarchies, with an all-powerful female at the top of each group. In the wild, dominant females have a group of little males around. One of those males would be the dominant male, and he would have the benefit of being able to mate with the female. They may be a star attraction, but the zoo's clownfish breeding program has stalled. We haven't actually bred any in Chester Zoo for a while. Breeding clownfish can be rather tricky, thanks to one of their more unusual traits. Clownfish um, have the ability to change sex. As nature runs its course, when that dominant female dies, the male would then become female, and then all the subordinate males scrap it out until one of them becomes the dominant male, and then the cycle continues again. We've unfortunately ended up with a situation that we have quite a lot of stroppy females and just a handful of very weedy males. With so few impressive males, Keeper's hopes of breeding the species are all resting with a small 12-year-old male called Polo. Polo is pretty wimpy, but you know what he lacks in physical ability? He definitely makes up for in, in his kindness. He doesn't bite me when I'm trying to clean the tank, so that makes me like him a little bit more. Polo may be small, but he's not lacking courage. He's been fighting repeatedly with the other males to win the attention of Rosie, the dominant female. They look very sweet and cuddly, bobbing in and out of anemones, but in actual fact, they're, they're quite vicious, <laughs> for one of a better word. Clownfish have these teeny little nippy teeth. They'll try and nip the other's fins. They'll headbutt one another. They might get bites and lesions and cuts, which can get infected. Worst case scenario, they could fight to the death. It seems that in the cutthroat world of clownfish courting, Polo has been injured. Polo has developed a, a wound on the side of his face. With an injury like that, if it gets badly infected, that could become systemic throughout his body and he could die. Obviously, the main goal for a lot of our animals in our collection is to breed them, but the health of the individual that's currently in our care is by a mile the most important. And because of that, it's time for us to take him out of there and put him into a tank on his own just to give him a bit of respite. So, for now, Polo's been taken out of the mating game for his own good. In the aquarium, clownfish Polo is in the isolation tank after being injured in a fight to win the heart of dominant female Rosie. Hi, Polo. But his wound isn't healing. We'll always consult the vets over a health issue with the animals, but it's also obviously quite stressful for a fish to be taken out of the tank, be treated and put back in. The keepers are going to treat Polo with a more natural, organic method to avoid removing him from the tank. What we're going to try is to get one of our cleaner shrimp called Marco, and we're going to introduce him to Polo. So out on the reef, fish, big and small, go to these cleaner stations, and it's a bit like taking your car to a car wash. The shrimp will find a rocky outcrop where he's quite obvious to passers-by. Cleaner shrimp have these wonderful long white antennae that they wave around in the ocean, which is basically like them saying, look at me. Shrimp will clean that fish of different parasites from their skin, clean up any wounds that they have, and then the fish can go on his way much cleaner. And obviously the shrimp gets a benefit because he gets a 
tasty dinner. Marco is currently in a different tank, so first he will need to be caught. But this particular shrimp is a notoriously slippery customer. Right, so where are you? Oh, OK, so Marco's down here. Gently, gently catching monkey. Marco has proven quite difficult to catch. <laughs> Trying to lure him into a net with some food. Right, OK, come closer to the net, mate. He's very fast. He's not stupid. He knows what a net is. <laughs> and so whenever you go near him, he just shoots off back down into the dark. I tried everything. I even got waders on. Tweedledum and Tweedledee come to mind. <laughs> have to be quite careful that I don't break any of the corals. The waders was like a wall in a china shop. It didn't quite work. I had <laughs> no luck whatsoever. But Andrea just whipped him out. Ah, got him! As if nothing had happened. And that's why she's in charge and I'm not. <laughs> We go, housemates. Fingers crossed. Marco will clean that wound for him. In the aquarium, Chester's vet Ian is checking on Polo, the clownfish. Fantastic. It does look so much better. He does, yeah. yeah. So Pearl actually reacted really well to the antibiotics. The wounds started healing much quicker with the help of the vets. Pearl has been on his own in a tank for a couple of months now. Um, we wanted to keep him there to make sure that the wound had fully gone. But Polo's time alone seems to have had a surprising side effect. There is the possibility that Polo might be going through a bit of a change. He seems to have got a little bit bigger, which could be an indication that he's actually becoming Paulette. <laughs> he's got no other females or no other males to compete with. He is becoming the dominant one of his tank. And part and parcel of being the dominant one of your tank means being female. But obviously, we weren't really planning on Polo becoming a girl. Um, but such is life, you know, sometimes nature takes its course without you planning for it to do so. You never know, Polo might actually have a better chance of getting a boyfriend than a girlfriend. And after a quick rethink, the keepers now believe they have the perfect match for Polo, a male called Mentos. I'm really pleased that the lover that I picked out for Polo seems to be to Polo's taste. <laughs> Just call me Silla Black. Fingers crossed we'll have lots of little Polos. 